So now we're going to talk about the various equipment that you'll use when you're doing an awake nasal tracheal intubation. This is what we consider pretty much foundational in, in when you're doing this procedure. So everything has a very important role in the process. So first, you'll want some Afrin. You can also use fennel Afrin, but just something to use for vasoconstriction in the nasal passage to help with secretions and bleeding. Then we've got 4% lidocaine cream, and this is called anesthesia cream. It's in a cream is for short, uh, but you can get anything that works as long as it's 4% and in a cream form. The other anesthetic you're going to want to use is 4% aqueous lidocaine. This is going to be applied to both the back of the mouth as well as the epiglottis and arytenoids and the vocal cords and those structures down there. So this is really important to have as well. I should mention that when you're thinking about this, especially with a really small patient, make sure that you talk and verbalize and confirm that there is, you're not reaching lidocaine toxicity. You can potentially give somebody a decent amount of lidocaine here, but we use a ton of both the cream and the aqueous lidocaine in a single person and do just fine. So you can, you, the, the ceiling's pretty high, but just something to consider when they're really, really small. Surge lube, of course, for lubing up the tube as well as the scope to get through the tube. And then for applying the aqueous lidocaine, we have a magic atomizer. It's magic M-A-D-G-I-C, and that's made by Telflex. And this is a malleable atomizer that allows you to form it in whatever shape that you need and turn the corner and apply that atomized lidocaine to the epiglottis and surrounding structures. And it's really important that we're approaching this procedure with the patient awake, which means we need to pay attention to their comfort. So we provide them with some kind of basin to spit into if needed. We often use a cotton uh, four by four and either have the patient or the um, one of the clinicians hold their tongue uh, outside of the mouth to open up some more room in the posterior oropharynx. Uh, we often have a, a tongue depressor present to coat the tongue with uh, lidocaine cream if that's a chosen approach. And then if a patient's having a hard time while they're awake accepting the um, finger dilation or the tube into the nasopharynx, we sometimes find it helpful to use long cotton applicators. And by starting with one of these uh, coated with lidocaine cream or viscous lidocaine, that can be passed the length of the nasal passage. A second one can be added. And finally, a third cotton tip applicator, when they're all passed together, can just sit in the back of the nose and continue to, to provide anesthesia while the mouth and throat is being prepped. Okay, so the choice of tube is also very important. This is a 6-0 tube. Um, it's called a flex tip microlaryngeal tube. It has a softer bevel with a turn to give it uh, less chance of trauma. And it's five centimeters longer, so there's enough tube sticking out of the nose. I don't think you need to use any fancy tube that's designed for nasal intubation, uh, like some of those specially shaped tubes that make it easier to connect to the ventilator. The standard shape is fine, but we do appreciate the soft bevel and the longer length. And patients also appreciate um, having the tube warmed up. So use some warm or hot water, let the tube rest in there as you're preparing to let the tube get softer. And then Brian, you just use standard tool tape then to secure this to the patient after you're done intubating. Standard tool tape and your respiratory therapist can also attach it with a standard connection as well. And then your choice of scope is also important. You want uh, a scope with a working channel so you can apply some lidocaine through it when you're hovering above the vocal cords. And all the major companies who make video laryngoscopes make a disposable scope. So whatever system you have, you should be able to find a scope that you can use for emergency nasal intubation. The smaller, the better. This is a 3.8 millimeter outer diameter. That smaller diameter fits through the tube easier and makes it more maneuverable. And you still are able to suction and apply lidocaine through that port, which is very important for your patient.